Reading and writing data to cells is one of the most fundamental operations that you're going to use when you're writing a VBA code. So in this lesson, I'm going to teach you the different ways to write to a cell. And at the end, we're going to look also at entire rows and entire columns. Here, if you see, I have my Excel sheet and I have my VBA code. So that's the Visual Basic Editor. To get it, if you go to Developer here, you click under Visual Basic, you get this. I'm going to insert a module. So I'm going to right click here, Insert Module. I have my module one and I'm going to create a sub. I'm going to call it test. And here we're going to write our code. So let's start. First of all, we start with one cell. So one thing that is important in VBA and I like to do personally is to write the sheet name before my code. So I can obviously write, for example, range a1 dot value is equal, let's say, to P1. P1 is a text, so I have to put it in double quotation mark. And then I can just run this. And as you can see, I get P1 here. The problem is, if I go to another sheet and I click, I'll get P1 in the other sheet. And often, this is not a behavior that you want. So it's better to write sheet one dot range A1 dot value equal P1. So in this case, only it will write here. And be careful to use the right name. So for example, if I call this S1, you can see that here S1 is the name that is in parentheses, but I have to use sheet one. So this is one way to write something in cell A1. The other way to do the same is to use cells. So I can do sheet one dot cells. And then here I have to define my row. So for example, I want to write it in B1. So it's the first row. Then I do comma, I need my column. My column is B, so it's the second column. I put two, dot value is equal to P1. If I run this, you can see that I get the data here. I usually like to write it this way, but in some cases when you are doing some loops, you might want to do this because it's easier to catch the column this way. Another way to write in cells is to use this methodology. I'll do sheet one dot range. I'll do A in double quotation, but then I'll do and, and then I'll write two dot value is equal to P2. Here it's the same strategy as the first one, but instead of having the two inside and have A2, I have an and, so I'm concatenating text to get my cell. Why do I do this? Basically, when you are using for loop and while loops, this will be a very important way to write. And we'll see this in other lessons. You'll have an index and then the index will start changing. So this is the right way to write in a cell. So let's try it. You get P2 here. Now we move to writing to a range. So this is for range. The first way to write to a range is sheet one dot range. I'm going to do now A3. I have column C3 double quotation, close parenthesis, dot value is equal to P3. Now I did the same as here, but to take a full range from A3 to C3, I use this column here. So let's run it. You can see that we get P3 for those three cells. Then let's try a variation of this and see what happens. So I'm just gonna copy it and paste it and do four here. And here I'm gonna do four and four, but instead of a column, I'm gonna put a comma. So what do you think will happen? You see here, the B4 cell did not get filled with B4. Why? Because I have the comma. And basically I'm telling Excel I want cell A4 and cell C4. And if I want more cells, I can just have more commas and write the cells. I could also use this cell strategy for ranges. So for example, if I do sheet one dot range and I do cells five, which is the row. So I want the fifth row comma. The column is one because I want a five. 
comma cells 5 comma 3 so the fifth row the third column and then I close parenthesis dot value is equal to p5 this is a methodology that I also don't use often if you see it will fill everything so it will be equivalent to this one and since I have this one I prefer to use it over this one now you'll tell me for a4 c4 what if I have the same but I have double quotation mark here and double quotation mark here so let's see what will happen if I do this I'm gonna copy it and then I'm gonna go to a6 I will do double quotation here double quotation c6 and let's put p6 here let's run it and if you don't want to run it from here you can just press f5 so when you press f5 you will get the result notice the difference between row 4 and row 6 when I put the double quotation for each one of them and separate them with a comma it will fill the whole range if I don't put the double quotation in the middle it will take it as each one is an individual cell so this is very important be careful when you write your code so you don't have problems and mistakes because of such things now I'm going to show you another one sheet one dot range so same now however what I'm going to do instead of having a4 comma c4 I'm going to have two ranges so I'm going to say a7 to c7 comma e7 to f7 then I close my parenthesis dot value is equal to p7 if you noticed I use the same technique here but I put a range so what do you think will happen now I click play you can see that it skipped d why because it's using the same logic so it's looking at the first range it is putting the data then comma looking at the second range and it's putting the data one last one for ranges sheet one dot range a5 to c8 dot cells 4 comma 2 dot value is equal to p8 let me explain this to you because this is a bit difficult to understand so first of all i selected a5 to c8 a5 to c8 this is my selection right then i said cells fourth row second column so now i have my range where is my fourth row one two three four where is my second column here so it should write something here let's put it in yellow and check you see i got p8 here again why simple once you see it i select this data a5 to c8 i take my fourth row and my second column within this range so it's like a range within a range so those are the methodologies for range now we're gonna go to offset offset is very important because a lot of time you are filling some data in a table and the offset function will save you so i'm gonna do sheet one dot range i start with a1 dot offset i'm gonna do eight comma two dot value is equal to p9 let me explain this one so this one i start with a1 then I offset eight rows and two columns because the first argument is a row and then the second argument is a column we are here we do one two three four five six seven eight and then two columns one and two so p9 should come here let's also put it in yellow and let's try it as you can see it will come here so offset will take a cell and then it will move a number of columns down in this case and a number of rows to the right if you want to go to the other directions you do minus so if i want to go from here back i can do minus two i can also apply this offset to ranges so if i do sheet one dot range i do a1 
column B1, so I selected the range now, dot offset will do nine rows and one column dot value is equal to P10. So how does this work? This is my range. I offset nine rows. So nine rows will be here and one column would be here. So it's gonna move to this. Let's try it. I will teach you another trick if you want to debug your code. So if you do F8, it will go line by line in your code. So let's delete this just to show you. And let's do F8. You can see that every time I press F8, it is executing a line of code and I'm getting my information. And as you can see, we have moved from this range, nine rows down and one column. And this is why you get P10 here. One last trick, naming. So for example, if I go to the cell, it's called A11, but I can call it special cell, for example. So now it has a name and I can write to special cell. I can do sheet one dot range the same way we have been doing. I have to write the name in double quotation, then close the double quotation dot value is equal to P11. If I run it, you can see that I get the value. And this one is very useful because if you move your special cell to somewhere else in the worksheet, you don't have to see which row and which column, you can directly insert the value there. So when you have a financial model or you have something of this sort, you can name your last cell where you get the result like the NPV IRR, and then you can ensure that always the value that you get is inserted in this cell. Now let's look at entire rows and columns. I'm not gonna insert data in rows and columns, because otherwise it will fill the sheet. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play with the height of a row or a column. So let's try first sheet one dot row. I'm gonna select the row. So I'm gonna do 12 to 14. I'm gonna do the same strategies you have seen there. Dot row height is equal to 30. So if I run this, look at the height of those rows you can see that the height has increased. What it does, the same way we have done for cells, it takes row 12 to row 14. If you want to select specific rows, there is a strategy for this, which is very close to this one. So in this case, we used rows. In this case, we're gonna use range. So sheet one dot range, we do 16, column 16, comma 18, column 18, double quotation, close parenthesis, dot row height is equal to 30. So in this case, I'm selecting row 16 and row 18. Let's run it. You can see that the height of 16 and 18 has increased. Let's look now at columns. So columns are very similar to rows. First, we want to change the column width of consecutive columns. So for example, if I do sheet one dot range, if I do E to G, I close the double quotation, close the parenthesis dot column. This time it's width is equal to three. I run it. You can see that those columns have shrunk. Now, if I want to select specific columns, I can do sheet one dot range. Then I can start with H, column H. Then you can do comma. And for example, we can take K, K, column K. You do double quotation, close parenthesis dot column width is equal to three. Let's run it. As you can see, K now is a small and H is small. One last one, we can do sheet one dot range. And now we can use columns. For example, one comma columns three dot column width is equal to three. So this way 
what it will do is it will shrink A to C. Let's try it. As you can see, it shrinks A to C. I'm gonna put a link to this workbook so you have all the methodologies to write and read from cells. So just to tell you my preferences when I write code, I usually use this one. I also use this one quite often, especially when I have loops. Obviously, I use this and this for ranges. They are very practical for me. Those I use much less. And then offset is important because sometimes you need to write in a table so or a range. So I use both of them. Naming, I don't use that often. And for height and width, I usually use this. And I usually use this one. So please let me know in the comment section which ones are the ones that you use the most in your VBA code. And if you didn't do so, please like this video and subscribe to the channel.